Hey guys, Frank Cox here, the Barbecue Pit Engineer. On today's video, we're gonna make a material run. I've gotta get some tubing for the sled on the thousand gallon, so stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so I've got to make a material run for this uh, thousand gallon build that uh, Aaron and I are building for my buddy Ken Williams out in Oakland. And uh, I figured I'd just take you along for the ride. Um, it's been a while since I've talked about materials and how to find them for your smoker build and stuff like that. And so uh, this, this is probably the most opportune time because I'm taking you to my place I go to. So um, what happens is if you remember back in the day in uh, you know 2020 or whatever, you can you can re probably remember that material prices went through the ceiling. And if you didn't buy like the kind of volume that we buy, it was really hard to find affordably priced material. And you know the other thing is is that scrap yards were getting picked through, so it was even getting harder to find salvage material. So you had to be really crafty. Um, with the increase in pricing and stuff like that. And that was all due to, uh, I mean, regardless of your political views back in the time, back in the 2020, that's when all the stimulus checks started coming out and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, people were just buying everything. And so manufacturers couldn't keep up and it was a real pain. Well, anyway, we still face some of those, uh, some of the impact of that today. Um, it's not nearly as bad as it was. But, uh, you know, you'll notice when you drive by an SUV place or, uh, you know, any of these ATV places or stuff like that, you'll notice that the yards are full, especially tractors and lawnmowers and stuff like that. They're just full of product. Well, that has an equal and opposite effect. Prices do start to come down, but it tapers. It takes way longer for those prices to come down than it did for those prices to go up to begin with. So one of my favorite ways to do, to go about finding material for my build, especially if it's a build that I can go patina on, like this thousand gallon, uh, we're gonna do a raw finish on that tank. Um, therefore we can fit in material that might have a little bit of rust on it. Um, maybe it's got some existing paint and stuff like that. We can actually lean into that and uh, use that to our advantage to help the whole, the whole, uh, end product kind of pop if that makes sense so what we're doing today is we're running down to uh, my buddy john down here in st james he's got a pipe and steel company and basically what his business is is buying uh what's called material seconds or uh overrun kind of materials or even salvage materials at some point and uh whenever he buys that stuff he redeploys that material to fence builders and guys like guys that do pipe fence and and uh different projects like that people that build trailers all kinds of stuff and uh i started buying from him i don't know back in 2014 i think is when i first started buying from john and this stuff usually comes from auctions or he's got connections with uh manufacturing plants that sell off the overrun or, or scrap seconds and things like that. And, you know, you can get that for a fraction of the price of new. For instance, uh, I don't know what it is today, but sometimes you'll be up around two to three dollars a foot on some kinds of tubing, depending on what it is. Well, we can get down around a buck 50 or so um, typically on uh, some of the two by four or whatever tubing, sometimes even cheaper than that depending on what it is. Now, when you're shopping for this stuff, you gotta kind of be careful because you might get a piece, and I've had this happen a lot, you'll get a piece that might have like uh, a, the seam weld in it because when they extrude, when they make that square tubing, they're extruding that like the Play-Doh putty machine. And it's, it's a flat piece of metal that goes in and it's getting formed as it goes through the machine. And there's gonna inevitably be this seam where those two pieces come together the full length and it's kind of a of a butt what butt fusion kind of a situation where they weld it and then a lot of times it's ground down well towards the beginning or the end of a run or if a mach machine goes down 
that seam could either get crushed the wrong way and impact and kind of curl in or it could uh, just not be welded it could be split open and if you get a stick that that's that way on the full length of it you're going to have to cope with that somehow <clears throat> if it's a cosmetic thing not a big deal you can just push it together and weld it stitch it grind it down whatever but if it's a structural component like on the frame of a trailer or something like that <clears throat> you're going to have to you're probably going to wind up uh having to cut that thing out or something out of the middle of it and then splice that piece of tubing back together. So, you know, you just got to kind of watch for some of that. Um, more, most of my smoke smokestack material, rectangle or square tubing, um, smaller round tubing, like my hand, my hand bars for, uh, uh, cook chamber door handles, stuff like that will come from John or somebody like John. So that's, that's a really good way to go about it. You can do the same thing with like a uh, round pipe for cook chambers, um, like 24 inch and stuff like that. The only problem with doing that is that you could get in uh, to some really heavy wall thickness. Um, for instance, 24 inch pipe, it's really hard to get a hold of uh, thin wall tubing, which in their case, thin wall is a uh, quarter inch, you know. Um, when they put that on a semi and they on the back of a trailer and they chain it down or binder it down, it egg shapes. And that's the biggest downfall to thinner wall material on semis. So uh, that come in on semis. So they almost always go like heavy wall, like 24 inch pipe will be like three eighths wall thickness or five eighths typically. Um, heavier the pipe, the heavier the wall thickness typically. So that's why I personally try not to use pipe. I'll, I'll generally wind up having a cook chamber rolled or uh, something like that. So sometimes you can just get a tank and cut the heads off if you want. really don't want those domed ends, which some guys don't. You can just buy a tank and cut the heads off, you know, and, and weld plates back on. So, uh, but anyway, that's kind of a little bit about material, where to get it, how to find it, uh, who to get it from, that kind of thing. If you have any questions about this kind of content, uh, you can all, you're always welcome to drop in the comments or go over to smokerbuilderu.com. And uh, on that platform, you can uh, join up for free. You can take advantage of our community of guys like me that this is all they think about, building pits and stuff like that. Uh, you can also uh, use, utilize our online courses. They're mega cheap. Um, it just kind of helps keep the bill paid on the, on the platform we're on, Mighty Networks. Uh, anyway, and um, you can subscribe, an annual deal, whatever, get a free trial, cancel any time, all that. You know, you've heard it a million times. It doesn't really matter anyway. But uh, get on in there because that's where the gold is. That's where I was able to sit down and actually concentrate instead of try to catch content on the fly. And, uh, you know, there's online courses in there showing you how to well, fabricate and build smokers. So appreciate you. Until next time, keep your smoke thin and blue. Be watching for more content like this right here on the YouTube channel or on the podcast platform, whichever one you're listening to. Appreciate you.